hello and welcome to Watch What Crappens, the podcast for all that crap. We just love to talk about on Yale Bravs. Hi, everyone. I'm Ronnie. That's Ben over there. Hello, Ben. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? I'm good. We um, have a new way to start our recording days, and that is to catch up on Love Island U.S. So for the next couple of weeks through the rest of the season, we will be doing mini recaps over on Patreon. This one was about 30 minutes, I think, 25 minutes, 20 minutes. Yeah, we're shooting for 10 minutes. I don't think that's ever going to happen. <laughs> well, I think but, um, we're, we're in a high drama moment right now with Love Island. So we're, we're, we're you know, there's a lot to discuss, but uh, you know, there will be episodes, especially at, at, towards the end of the season. It'll definitely simmer down. Yeah. So the goal is to do about four of those a week over on Patreon. They are also on Crappens on Demand. So if you're a Love Island fan and need recaps, there we are. Go get it on Patreon. We're also going to release a episode at the end of all the week. Um, for those of you who aren't on Patreon, it'll be a full episode. All of those will be stitched together towards the end of the week for you. But if you're on Patreon, you'll get them all right on time. So we're giving, you know, extra to everybody. Extra for people on Patreon. Extra to people who aren't on Patreon. You know what? That's it, because we're, we're getting extra two, which is we're love, spreading love to fill our lives. So uh, today is Real Housewives of Dubai. How would you feel about Dubai? Um, you know, this was uh, this was entertaining. Um, you know, I didn't think it was the best episode of the season, but it was fun. You know, this, this, it's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> what the, did you uh, think, Ronnie? The real winner of all of this is that kid, Sarah's kid. He is officially now she a star. Is, I love him. I love him <laughs> so, so much. He is my favorite. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> he is so funny. Um, I think all of us just want to go take care of him, you know, and be like, you're us, you're mine now. <laughs> Dance for me. Dance for me. You adorable child. Um, love this kid. Can't, you know, Sarah's annoying as hell, but, you know, she made a good kid. So, you know, it's a wash. I'm going to say it's a wash. <laughs> It's a wash. <laughs> um, let's get into this episode. So uh, we're still with we're still in the desert party thing, and Caroline Brooks and Talene. Talene is trying to start this fight with Caroline Brooks, which I will say she's ballsy. I gotta right. hand it to Talene. She's not afraid because I would be. Caroline Brooks is not a sensible person. I would not want to yeah. start a war with her on television. Yeah, but she also has no power. So that's what's funny about her is that it's kind of like low hanging fruit because Caroline Brooks is not afraid to get nasty, but she also is not going to be able to have any true repercussions to your life. Like it's one thing to sort of fight with Teresa Judice, where she's the true star of the show and she'll, she's always gets people to her side or, or to start something with Lisa Vanderpump. But like Caroline Brooks, like, to start a fight with Caroline Brooks, like everyone's in a fight with Caroline Brooks. So it's almost like part of just being on the show. Kind of. But you know who else doesn't have power? Poop on the street. But you don't want to step on it because then you smell like poop all day. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I feel like that's kind of the thing. Caroline, not calling Caroline Brooks a piece of poop on the street, but just saying it's the the pain is the same. Like you don't want to get, maybe I shouldn't say poop on the street. I feel like this? the analogy is You don't more... want to step on glass. You know what I mean? Like glass doesn't necessarily have power. It's just a glass. It holds a drink, but you drop that shit. You step on it. You're fucked. Okay. And that's I think what being the friend is, is. I think being the friend is like stepping on the glass. I feel like I feel like everyone wants to just sort of like move that mess, move that mess away, you know. And I think like stepping on stepping on the glass is like actually reveling in the mess, right? Like hmm. that's that's how I think. I think she's just like, oh, the more I am just like I stand up for Caroline Brooks, the more I'm like friends with her. The more it's just going to be shitty for me, the more my my the soles of my feet are going to get torn up. And here That's I thought true. it was going to be fun and lovely, like Annie Lennox said. You know, that song is so happy sounding, my you know, like the violin, pants. the piano and everything. But it's not a happy song. It's literally about like walking on broken glass. It's not like walking on sunshine, which, by the way, walking on sunshine also would be very painful. I don't think people remember how much sun. Like, first of all, the sun does no. terrible things to us. Walking on sunshine and is horrible. Yeah, we would literally die. We would die. Yeah. It's, it's a terrible we, song. We'd be dead. <laughs> Don't walk on sunshine, guys. Okay. <laughs> also, stay out of it because skin cancer. Yeah. So, like, sunshine in general is overrated. We How about walk on it. sensible decisions? Yeah. I'm walking on sensibility. Hey. hey. <laughs> I'm walking on well thought out plans. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Anyway. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, and I think you're right. I think that probably Tolene is thinking, fuck this. I was brought on as this lady's friend, and now it's going to ruin my life. So I'm going to pull the classic move of turning on the person that brought me onto the show because I don't want everybody to team me up with her in their mind and hate me and not yeah. like me places as well. So That's, that's how know. it works. Because look what's yeah. happening to Saba, right? Saba's just staying loyal to Sara. And guess what? You're just a friend of sitting there at the end of the table. Whereas Talene is like... Saba's oh. also staying loyal to general assholery, I have to say. Saba's Which not very nice to anybody. And she's just like a snob there at the end of the table. Like, nobody wants to hang out with you. You're a dick. Okay? But I like that. And if you're wondering why nobody wants to hang out with you, it's because you're a dick. Like, you have to have some kind of charm. You can't just be like snotty making shitty comments at everyone and like being holier than like that's not what this well, show is you need to well, like it, up a little you can bit, be you just caroline stanbury is already doing it she doesn't have the humor caroline stanbury gets away with it because she's funny what does saba have has she ever made you laugh <laughs> remember one thing she's saba ever makes said. me laugh well she makes me laugh every single episode but not really oh, by her own go. intentions like but she's not making me laugh i just laugh at the idea of saba because she is so snotty and you know me you know me we talk about this my specific kind of, you know, thing is I love a snobby, wealthy lady. Like that's you just like a my wasp. I love wasp. I love just someone stuck up their own ass. That's just, All that's right. the kind of like asshole I'm drawn to. Like you love, you love like a, like a, like a, like a white trash mess. I feel like, I mean, we love, we both love these things, but I feel like that's really like, right. You love someone who's just like a total disaster, right? Like I that. like a looser cannon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You definitely yeah, you like, like a, a stick cannon. up. And not, by the way, not calling Saba a wasp, because obviously she's not technically, right. but just that Heather Dubrow coded yes, uh, stick up I her ass. Where, where I, I just hate that. I hate it in People. I hate it in, in uh, Housewife. I really like a looser, you know, grosser. I like someone that probably smells like yesterday and also wine, like has like that wine lip, mm. you know, like that dried line of stained wine on their lip. Right. I like that kind of a person. Like, I want you to smell like Benson and Hedges and yesterday. Right. And I want you to be someone who's going to a country club and just saying the yeah. most devastating things to someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's why so, is kind of my type. <laughs> Brooks is basically not fi uh, falling for this fight because Talene really is just trying too hard to make a fight. She's like, well, but then I talked to her and I was like, don't you think it's stirring the pot? Like, isn't it, guys? Do you think it's stirring the pot, guys? Is it stirring the pot? <laughs> First of all, girl, it's 120 degrees out here. Can we not do this right now? Okay. I Stop know. talking about pots and stirring and, and heat of the kitchen in this heat. I know. And Saba's Brooks, melting in the corner, by the way. Every time they cut to her, she looks like she's about to fall out of her chair. Who? Saba. Of course. Because <laughs> when has Saba ever been outside? You know what I mean? <laughs> by the way, that's not a bad quality. <laughs> that's like a we're quality like, I emulate. We're like, we're like, everyone should stay away from the sun. The sun is a terrible thing. Oh, look at fucking Saba staying inside. <laughs> Well, you know, I don't even know why I said that because you know I love the inside more than I love Jesus. So, um, no offense. Um, so, uh, I'm outside when I say that. You know that. who created <laughs> so the inside? Sorry, you know who created the inside? Jesus. Jesus. He did. Thank you. So, uh, he certainly created the inside of my heart. <laughs> um, so, anyway, Brooks is not falling for this. She's not going to fight because she sees what Tolene is trying to do. She's trying to make a fight with Brooks to get a storyline. And she's not going to she's not gonna hand it to her. Yeah. And she says it's because she's been going to therapy. Girl, you've been going to um, Zanny bars, okay? You've been taking Xanax. And I understand this religion because anybody who is fairly new to a benzo understand. Is Xanax a benzo? I think it is. Anyone understands know. the glazed eyes in Brooks's face. And she's like, yeah, no one's going to get to my inner peace. Girl, she, puff, puff, pass that inner peace. I want some. <laughs> so then Sarah... She's like, okay, how about this? Tell her how you feel, and then let her tell you how you feel, and then that's it. That's it. And then Stanbury turns to Sarah and goes, what are you, the Brooks Whisperer? We're sitting here in the middle of the desert. We all came here to watch them fight. Why are you trying to end it right now, you imbecile? <laughs> 
Um, and she's like, uh, it's not that I don't care. It's just that, like, she, I'm, she's just struggling to find words. And she's like, what, 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 am I supposed to, what, what am I supposed to do with this? What am I supposed to do? And Sarah's like, you're saying, what you're saying is you already had a conversation, and that's why you don't care to talk right. She goes, yeah, okay, okay. Let's just, just, let's just ignore it, ignore it. And Sarah's like, no, you cannot just ignore it. You cannot. And Tolene's like, oh my God, I feel like Sarah's your shaman or something. Well, I feel like you've got your hand up her ass and your puppet you're you're doing puppet things you're doing puppet things with brooks just get your hand out of brooks's ass already and sarah goes well maybe i've got my hand up her heart not her ass <laughs> that lie was so quick because they were all fighting i was like that was the funniest shit like i feel like more people need to appreciate the bullshit of that line no i have my hand up her heart not her ass <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Chanel is like, I think that Sarah's trying to guide Brooks because Brooks can go zero to hundred, and if you piss her off, oof, oof. And uh, right now she is wearing a big, epic silver ruffle. This is a new look that we're seeing for Chanel, and she is she doesn't have a wig, and she has this big gown, and like I don't know, she just never ceases to amaze. We've never seen her completely bald, no. I don't think so, but of she course, she looks so amazing. beautiful. Oh my gosh, the best. So then um, Sarah's like, uh, I'm just asking my friend to apologize, Stanbury. Stanbury's like, oh, God, stop speaking for her. Jesus Christ. Next thing you're going to be asking old hairy-backed Russians to fix broken toilets. <laughs> well, if I tell her to apologize, you're upset at me. And if I, tell, if I don't tell her to apologize, you're upset at me. There's nothing I can do, hand and heart. And Stanbury's like, well, I would like you to let her speak for herself. She has her own opinion. Plus, she's also wasted. And it'll be hilarious to hear what she comes out of her mouth. And so she's like, well, I don't understand what Brooks has done to Sarah to make her back back her blindly. You know, Sarah has a lot of shit to use against her. And I'm wondering if Brooks has brought this stuff to Sarah's attention. And part of me feels gross even talking about the gossip on the show because I feel like people from this show can get in a lot of trouble for, like, trivial gossip to the rest of us mm -hmm. that I don't really talk about. But there's a lot of... Just Google Sarah's name, Sarah Aldamani, right? That's her last name. And the guy from that Netflix show that she was, they were talking about her dating last week. I think he was married or like, there's all this gossip about Sarah. So you can, you guys can look it up on your own because I don't know, it feels grosser talking about general gossip on this show. But um, I wonder if Brooks like holds stuff against her. And then mm -hmm. Sarah's like, well, I don't want that girl on my bad side. But whatever it is, she's definitely riding hard for Brooks. And it seems odd that she would do that to me mm. and to Sambury as well. Mm. So mm. she's like, I mean, it's like La La Land. Step back a minute. See what's happening. Realize that you can't sing more than two notes in a row and stop trying. All right, Ryan Gosling. Like... <laughs> <laughs> is it not is it not enough that you're gorgeous? Do we have to listen to you sing mediocrely as well? <laughs> Sarah's like, well, I don't get it. Why are you triggered every time I talk? And Sarah goes, well, you couldn't stand this woman last year. Don't you remember? Sarah, you are a hypocrite, Sarah. And Brooke's like, no, she's not. And she's like, <laughs> and Stanbury's like, but she points out the way Sarah talks is bollocks and is annoying and asks why she can't talk like a normal person. You humbo jumbo is your humbo jumbo is but looks fucking ridiculous. And Sarah's just like, you are. You're fucking ridiculous. So she goes, oh, shut up, Sarah. Okay, you guys, this is why. I think a lot of people last season were like, why do you like Caroline Stanbury? Oh, she's disgusting. This is why. I stood up in my living room. I was like, fuck yes. Okay, I had a foam finger on. I was like, fuck yes. Except it said, I'm with stupid. And it's meant to point at Sergio. But I love her. <laughs> Finally, someone said what we were all thinking. Shut the fuck up, Sarah. Okay, <laughs> shut up, you phony. And Sarah's like, you shut up. She's like, oh, sh no, you shut up. No, but you shut up. But you shut up. You shut up. Shut up. And telling us, it's like the squid game's over here. Am I right, everyone? I don't know what that meant. Well, but if, that if, was really funny. I would love it if this was what a challenge was in squid games. It's like, all right, you have to say shut up to someone until one of you loses your voice and then you are killed. Well, if you think about it, Caroline Stanbury was the first at Squid Games back in Lady of Lon Ladies of London. Remember when she was in the car with her driver and she was like, all right, go forward, stop, left, <laughs> stop, back, stop, <laughs> forward, stop. I mean, when Squid Game came out, I actually thought of Stanbury in that scene. <laughs> oh, God, Squid Game is coming back, huh? I Listen, like Squid Game, you're already a fucking ripoff of literally battle everything else that came before you. I'm not 
you were decent, but I don't trust you. That guy completely bailing on his daughter to go back to the Squid Game. I know. I was that guy. I enjoyed Squid Game so much, but the ending bothered me so much that I'm like, I don't think I could ever watch it like another season because it like I was like, this is bullshit. No. Yeah, Squid Game was fun, but the good one to watch out of those shows because there are a ton of them like that. But the best one out of them, in my opinion, is Alice in Borderland. Yeah, that one is so good. good. People oh, it's so good. good. Okay, go watch that one. I mean, it's like You're watching welcome, Alice in Borderland over here. <laughs> so, sorry, it was actually Shalene who said, it's like watching Alice in Borderland over here. Thank you for not co-opting my voice. I don't watch those ridiculous shows. <laughs> so Lisa's like, I don't know why Stanbury's getting so worked up. This is always how Sarah's been. She's a walking Instagram meme. <laughs> See, this is the thing with uh, her that I don't understand. Why does she hate Stanbury so much? She should be best friends with Stanbury. Well, don't you think? Well, Stanbury at the reunion said that Lisa got all her designs like she, they were like stolen, basically. Or yeah, but off. that's because Lisa had been coming for her all season. Poking well, her, I mean, poking like, at her, poking at like, why does she hate Stanbury? Like, let's be honest. If you were in like a group of friends and Caroline Stanbury is in it, like Caroline Stanbury is an asshole. Like, you probably would hate her too. But I agree that, like, well, yeah, but so is you know, Lisa. That's what I'm saying. They're so similar. Sometimes they you have, have the to, same opinions and they have the same balls to go after people. I wish they were friends. Is what I'm saying. I I agree. I think that they would be they would be a good um a good a good duo. But um, anyways, uh, by the way, I have to say, to Lisa's credit, when she said that Sarah was a walking Instagram meme, I did think that was very funny. And I did let out a little chuckle. So Sarah then is to Stanbury. She's like, zero class. Brands from head to toe, but zero class. Goes, oh, shut up, Sarah. You're pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what you have to say. I'm rich. And Lisa's like, well, I probably wouldn't talk to an Emirati woman like that, but that's because I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> That line right there kind of encapsulates my problem with this show, that it's really hard to get past, <laughs> is that sense of danger that l just, that sense of danger that just hangs over this show. And it was a, a thing last year with Sara as well, like, don't fuck with Sara, she'll call the police on you for cursing in public or fighting in public or whatever mm -hmm. that is. And that just really, that really bothers me. I mean, I've watched yeah. a lot of Handmaid's Tale and I don't like it. I'm sorry. Yeah, Gross. I mean, I've just sort of just, I've just... I've made, I've I've accepted it and decided I'm just gonna have to just move forward <laughs> because it just it is what it is. What am I gonna do? Well, I'm like, obviously be... <laughs> moving forward, but I'm just calling out. I feel you know, see something, say something. There, I you saw it and I said it. I don't like it. I feel uncomfortable and the threat of basically like fuck with fuck with somebody from this culture and you will fucking die. I don't I don't like that. It's not fun. Everyone's like, yeah. oh my god, this is like the lightest housewives ever. Like I've it's not like, that it's different in America. Fun. It's not any say. dark drama. And then it's like, don't fuck with her. Or she'll have you you know sentenced to death. It's like whoa, okay. I don't fun. think American history. Unfortunately, I don't think American history is too different. Unfortunately, let's it be is honest. actually current history kind of is r levels of rights. Yeah, are, are currently quite different. Yeah, sorry, um, <laughs> sorry. We've got some. We've got some dark history in our past, but yeah. But either way, this is not. A, this is not a referendum on uh, <laughs> on cultural hey, comparisons. Listen, I just made a comment. I'm just saying I'm saying I'm saying I'm moving forward. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a crappens commercial. So Sarah is basically like, you know, when you disagree with Stanbury, you're suddenly a mouthpiece. But when I defend her to Sergio, she likes it, huh? And well, of course she likes it. <laughs> Everyone likes it when you when you're defended on like if someone, you know, defends you on your behalf, you know? Yeah, of course. Yeah, why wouldn't she like it? Uh, so then Sarah's like, well, I'm not going to be Stanbury's puppet and her attitude of you're with me or you're against me. Um, well, but you're being Brooks's puppet. So I don't know. You're always yeah. someone's puppet. You know what I mean? Pick mm -hmm. the more fabulous person. That's what I say. So then Brooks, Lisa and Sarah are like, OK, let's go stand and talk a little bit away from the table because the producers told us to. OK, it's like, OK, great. So Brooks is like, OK, I have a question. Was any comment made about Lisa's home? <laughs> it was like, uh, okay. And then they're basically saying how, like, Sa like Sarah, Lisa said that Ion shared that Sarah was, this whole thing went, last week they went to the restaurant and um, Sarah was expressing concern for Lisa, like, is everything okay at home? Because Lisa seems really stressed uh, these days. 
Right. And the reason it's confusing is because basically Saro is being very passive aggressive and saying Lisa's a bitch. Is something wrong at home? Why is she acting like that? And then when it was confusing, Saba jumped in and was like, she just snaps. So we knew what she was really saying. But she was, she's trying to pretend, because Sarah's such a wuss, she's trying to pretend she wasn't really saying that. She was really just trying to show that she cares. She was concerned trolling, which is what it's called on the internet, oh. where you say something rude, but you, you shroud it in concern. Like you're, right. Right. right, you're like, pretending like you really, really care. Like she really care. I'm re like, like Sarah suddenly cares about Lisa's home life when I don't think has Sarah ever been to Lisa's house? Have we ever seen that happen? Did that happen last right. season? Like you're a real asshole. Are you okay? Is it because you're something bad's going on? Have they Who's ever hung out one-on-one? -on -one? make you just horrible. Yeah, have they ever hung out one-on-one -on, -one on this show? Like I feel like they don't even like know each other, you know? So, uh, so Sarah's now saying like, no, that's not what I said. I said, is Lisa okay with everything at home? You know, you know, because, you know, Ayan definitely sent the wrong message to Lisa, you know, because in Arab culture, it's very normal to ask about home and if everything is OK. And like, <laughs> is your marriage falling apart? That's just like a normal thing to ask. Like, hey, you didn't get a cold brew today. Is your marriage failing? I feel like it's failing. That's just the Arab culture, you know? Yeah, literally no other culture is like, hey, how are things at home? <laughs> Glad you cornered that market, Sarah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I feel like... <laughs> I feel like it, like New York culture is like so. Everything okay? Like, what's going on? You're looking skinny. Everything okay at home? I feel like if you went to Manhattan, like you would definitely hear that. Literally, everybody says, "Hey, how are things at home? <laughs> hey, Ben, oh. how are you? How's Dom? <laughs> I don't How's, think I, you know? I don't think I interpreted what you said correctly. I think I took a you didn't get my opposite. sarcasm. I didn't get your sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie is sneezing. <laughs> sneezing is not at home, Ronnie. You I was sneezing. like, no, Thank Ronnie. You, ben. <laughs> I did not pick up on your sarcasm at all. <laughs> yeah, literally everybody <laughs> in the world says, Hi, how are things at home? But Sarah's mm -hmm. like, Why wouldn't I say that? I'm Arab. Only Arabs say. I mean, anyone who doesn't understand my culture would surely not understand why I'm asking how things are at home. Yes, Sarah, it's only fucking you. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> But Sarah, of course, is Sarah, so she will never admit that she was being a dick, you know? And really all Sarah has to say is, I felt like Lisa is being uh, defensive and an asshole to me. Why are you being a defensive and an asshole? But she can't say that because it doesn't fit in with her, you know, paid, uh, paid classes on how to be a spiritual person and get the rage out or whatever the fuck she teaches. <laughs> so she's got to right. be like, I really just care about your home life. Yeah. And... um Basically, Lisa's like, she basically is like, um, the fact that you you asked about it implied that she thought there was something wrong. And, you know, I trust the way that Chanel, you know, interpreted it to me. This was not a case of Chanel got it wrong. Right. So then um, we see shots like the beginning of the episode, right? Where they're like, okay, that fight's over. Let's really start the episode and see what everyone's doing at home. And um, Brooke's kid is wearing the MetaQuest thing, you know, like the virtual reality headset, which I thought was really cute uh, because, you know, he didn't choose like a roller coaster or like dinosaurs or anything. He just chose like a really nice mom who plays Monopoly with him. <laughs> like, what are you playing over there? I thought he was playing. Um, I thought he was like trying to beat zombies because I definitely. <laughs> he probably was. I'm because I had a distinct reaction where I was like, wow. That kid is doing like a zombie game in virtual reality because that's intense. He's like 10 and I would not be able to. I put on a virtual, uh, I put on like the Apple Vision mask and I went into like, I, I turned on a thing that was like, John Favreau presents when the dinosaurs roamed the earth and you're like flying over dinosaurs and I, and there were pterodactyls all around me and I was terrified i was like one of these things would come at my face because you feel like everything's gonna come at your face and i was like i i was like this is too intense so i'm like i couldn't even do something that involves zombies my hands off to this kid yeah we're, I'm, I'm, I'm a pussy by, by the way that's what i'm saying yeah anything Horse flying sports. in our faces we can't we can't handle no. even when someone throws me keys i'm like <laughs> the rules are keys balls and pterodactyls they cannot be near my face all right so um i think that's a good rule <laughs> <laughs> pterodactyls right. especially <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah i don't i don't know what it was i just like the idea of him like finally getting virtual reality and being like i would like a normal mother please <laughs> like hi honey virtual yeah the virtual <laughs> the better brooks <laughs> it's 6 p.m and i'm home to read you a story oh mom you don't have to sure i do <laughs> 
Hey, hey, Adam, what are you doing on your virtual reality mask? Oh, I'm just sitting on a toilet that's not embedded in the floor. <laughs> uh, Zoltan, Zoreg, whatever your name is. Uh, all right, let me wear that thing. All right, get me a uh, Zoltan with a shaved back and a talent for installing toilets properly. <laughs> That'd be great. So then uh, Sara's kid is twerking. <laughs> And she's like, oh, my God, because Akeen comes over and she's like, oh, my, it's like ding dong. She goes, Akeen is here. And he runs to the door and starts twerking. And she, she's like, oh, my God, no more twerking. Please. He's twerking. And then Akeen takes off his shirt, which I really appreciate, and jumps in the pool. Karma um, love. What did he call him last week, the kid? He called caramel, him like caramel. Caramel. Caramel seduction. <laughs> caramel seduction. I mean, the kid has a way with words. I mean, like, look, he, he calls it as he sees it, you know, uh, for us, not for him, obviously. I am dying. <laughs> so uh, he twerks, and then, yeah, Keen jumps in the pool. And then Talene's kid is crying about having to go to school, you know, which and, I get. And then Talene is like, okay, fine, you don't have to go to school. I was like, excuse you, you put that kid on that bus. If they have buses in Dubai, they probably have just like private, like, Tesla limos that take everyone to school there. Oh, God, but, I can't say anything because I refused. I would refuse. To the point where I would miss the bus and my dad's like, you're going, you're going to walk. And then he would follow me in the car. I would walk on the train track, literally just hoping to get hit <laughs> all the way to the school. I would follow the train track and my dad would follow on the street to make sure that I actually went to the school. 12 and, and a half years what later. What a in the ass child I was. Literally followed me all the way to the school. It was not close. <laughs> it's like the runaway bunny, except... <laughs> the runaway ronnie you know it's like if you're on the train tracks i'll be there um i don't tell you years, it's all because of pe i was like i will not go to a place that subjects me to exercise i will not i can't believe after all these years of podcasting with you i'm still learning these amazing stories from your childhood like they just <laughs> it's amazing like well, that one just we... came back to me when i saw that kid crying i was like oh you're so lucky can we, your as a community you and making you fucking walk on the train track i want okay as a crappens community can we start a gofundme so that way ronnie can have a pilot to make his life into a tv show because oh, these God. stories like what is like you should have like your own version of the wonder years no oh, god like the, the wonder years. years or something like that like i don't know like it's just oh, lord it's amazing oh uh, i need therapy more than a book so then um <laughs> we go to chanel and lisa they go to a chic cafe oh by the way uh we were saying something I was, we were like, why are they there in August? They weren't there in August. They were at a restaurant called August. And a lot of people were like, guys, you're dumb. So you're, you're right. We're dumb. Okay. So now they're at a chic cafe called Society. And it's Chanel and Lisa. And Chanel's like, oh, look, these boobs are boobing. Hmm. And Lisa's like, yes, I brought the milk for the coffee. And Chanel's like, I will drink it. <laughs> I love and their boobies. And they're laughing and everything. They talk about the meal and everything. And talk about Brooks. And they're also really surprised that Talene decided to just decide with Stanbury. And in fact, they actually don't really like it. They feel like it's kind of gross that like the moment that there's a fight that she goes to her best friend's enemies. So I was like, oh, I was surprised that that was their reaction. So they actually don't like Talene because of this. Um, and so then Lisa. Yeah. And I kind of think that they're right. Don't I you? Kind of, yeah, I do too. But I just was surprised that that's where... I was surprised that that was their reaction. I but thought their the reaction would be is, like, is I'm so glad she year, finally realized that Brooks is terrible. But instead they were like, actually, she's being a shitty friend. Well, yeah, because she it's just, yeah, because like you just go to the other person's side. That's like she's like, I wouldn't even do that. I, I would never do that to my worst enemy. But Brooks was just Caroline's friend. So she just betrayed Caroline. So I don't think it's as bad, but I don't know. There's so much betrayal. I just can't keep there's Keep so track. much betrayal over virtually nothing. So then uh, what was funny to me was that Lisa was so mad at Sarah's comment. Like, is everything okay at home? Is everything okay at home? She was so mad. But then she's like, you know, I was thinking about it. And um, like, yeah, <laughs> she's like, yeah. <laughs> Turns out things aren't great at home. <laughs> That's what's so funny. She got so mad that the comment was said. But then as she reflects, we realize, okay, there may be some issues after all. Yeah. Well, you know, it's just... If you have something to say, come to me and say it. Don't be like, "Is this? Why is this girl being such a bitch?" You know, right? But um, she starts talking about her problem at home, and basically, she's like, "You know, I have these kids, and I'm trying to do this business, and then my mom's stressing me, and then my mom told me, what if Rich leaves you? 
You better have um, you better have a backup plan. And this is looking like trouble for it's Lisa. Like yeah, and I guess they're also having some intimacy issues as well. So you know, it's it's not like what Sarah said was totally. I mean, it was obnoxious, but although honestly, you know what I have to say. Like Sarah is obnoxious. I don't think that what she said was really like crazy, crazy obnoxious. I agree with you. She was totally concerned trolling. So she was obnoxious from that point of view. But for her to be like, God, like she's really been like crazy lately. It was, I wonder if everything's okay at home. I don't think that that's like sort of going back to what we're saying. It's not the wildest thing to say. And especially when it turns out that there are some issues. Well, my issue with it isn't that it's a wild thing to say. It's right. Accurate. I totally get it. Right, I totally get it. It's just yeah, that she's it's just an her. It's just her not being able to say it honest. She just can't be honest about it. Exactly. She, uh, she's always talking about honesty, but she can't just say, "I did say that because you seem to be getting pissy a lot lately." And I think it's like I'm wondering what it is. Are things like that at home? I mean, I did say it, but I said it out of concern for you, not because you know I hate you or anything. Right. Yeah. No, I totally get it. Um, but it's just funny because I feel like the narrative of this episode is kind of like, "Wow, Sarah was obnoxious about that." It's like, no, but like. You know, she just sort of said it the way like I could see myself saying it. That's what always happens. That every time I come down on someone, then I put myself in that situation. I'm like, but I probably would say the exact same thing, and then I feel bad, and then I'm like, actually, they they're right, they're right, because I like made myself. It's like villainous empathy. Because yeah, because I, like. yeah, I feel like I suffer from that a lot too. Like I really like the Disney movies that started to come out from the villain's point of view. <laughs> You're like, oh, so that's what Cru Cruella was thinking, or like, oh, Maleficent, she was a good chick after all. It was everybody mm -hmm. else's perception of her, you know. And I feel like that that's a total Housewives watcher that we do that naturally, and that's how we pick our favorites. <laughs> Housewives, we're like, oh my god, the villain's actually the hero. <laughs> it's like a Disney mind fuck, you know? Yeah. So now we go over to the Stanbury house um, and uh, the dogs are humping <laughs> and Sergio's family is there and his mom is sitting at the table and his sister's there as well and the boyfriend and they're talking about what they're going to do in the evening and Stanbury's actually like pretending to to like these people even though she clearly does not like them at all and she goes you know I'm not avoiding his family this trip it's just how I am with family I give them the keys and I say you know off you pop off to boarding school I mean that's how it is in my family you don't talk to your your loved ones you just send them off to distant places where nannies and brown, brown uniforms can take care of them that's it it's like I'm so glad you're here so I don't have to be please make sure he pisses on the pad all right <laughs> And uh, she's uh, saying how uh, she's like, you know, I just need my alone time. That's all. I sh I'm sure you all get it. I mean, you you birth this monster of a human Sergio here. I mean, everyone needs a little bit of break away from him. Am I right? Do you, Sergio, don't mind. I'm just high fiving your mother. Okay, there we go. Now listen, God forbid I say anything offensive here, but. The thing is, I just need a break because I feel like a mother who's always stuck at home, mothering a child who wasn't mothered properly in the first place. No offense, darling. All right. <laughs> no offense. I know that was your job. I'm sure you were very, very busy. You didn't stay at home at all, did you? You did every day. Oh, <laughs> well, I don't know. Pay attention. <laughs> Pay attention more. I guess that's my advice to you. All right, toodles. Oh, before I leave for the spa, um, Sergio's mother, whatever your name is, um, you are fine carrying our baby, am I? Am I right? Right, because he's just looking for someone the age of his mother to carry a baby these days. So she's like, "So your son wants a child, which is absolutely disgusting." Does everyone agree? All right, talk that over. I'll be out of here. <laughs> Bye. Um, I know I'm supposed to apologizing you uh, to you for not wanting to raise your son, but you're certainly not apologizing to me for not wanting to raise your son. So let's just call that a draw, shall we? All right, I'm going to the spa. <laughs> So Sergio's sitting there talking to his family. He's like, oh, I miss the Caroline. I used to know. And, uh, you know, his mom is like, what? The total bitch. It's like, yes, I miss that. And so they start talking about he's, you know, of course, he wants to have a baby. And he's telling them that, like, oh, we only have like a year left to have the baby. And the mom's like, oh, no, like, don't worry. There's time. There's time. Like, it's it'll be fine. It's more important for you guys to be have a healthy relationship with that monster of a daughter-in-law I have. You know, I really thought it was going to be more of that, where the mom's like, uh, run. This lady is obviously not going to give you a child. She doesn't want you to have a child. <laughs> run. This woman is horrible. Yeah. But actually, the mom and the sister were like, give it time, you know. And the mom does say, I don't see her with a child. But she's saying it in a way that's like, 
oh, honey. I don't even think the mom wants him to have a child. No. I think she's like, oh, honey, you can't. You can't. You, you don't even know when to take the popcorn out of the microwave on time. Like, you've <laughs> literally never made unburned popcorn. I don't want you to have a baby, honey. I know. I mean, she's like, you can see the mom's like, she already has four children, including you. Okay, so she doesn't want another baby. The mom actually gets it. But there was also part of me that felt like the mom and the sister, they probably hate Caroline. And they probably were like, no, no, give it time, give it time. They're just kind of like knowing that the clock is going to run out. And then they're hoping that Sergio will leave and find someone who will bear him a baby. Yeah, I think what they were saying was, you have time, you have time. And he's like, no, mother, it's only one year. And then she has to prioritize me. She has to prioritize me. I'm the man of the house. There's only one year. The doctor said one year. If there's no one year, no baby, no baby ever. No baby ever. And they're like, you have time. And I think they mean you have time. Like, right. she's got a few, She's she may have months, <laughs> she, <laughs> she may have ovarian months, but you've got so much more time to find another one. Because even Caroline Stanbury is like, I mean, he's he's good for now. Like, how long could he possibly <laughs> last? You know, he's deliciously flavored half and half, but he's still half and half. <laughs> and eventually I'm going to have to buy a new cotton. So I know she speaks about him like a Suzuki. Well, you know, it's nice. But after seven years, they really do start to break down. Um <laughs> But like, like, uh, that was but cold. Do, I used to drive a Suzuki. <laughs> How dare you? I don't know why Suzuki is the brand that I went for. I drove a Suzuki sidekick. I remember those Suzuki sidekicks. It was a little box, a little red. When I moved to LA, I drove here to LA and that it broke down twice on the way here. <laughs> and I had to have a, I also had a sidekick telephone from T-Mobile at the same time. I had You're a sidekick. Really, you had a brand. I drove a sidekick. You had what a you brand you had to maintain. Um, I, uh, like when they're like, yeah, don't worry, Sergio, you have time. I'm like, does he have time though? Because he's already, he's like 30 and he still thinks that a model of a vagina is an ear canal. So I think. Girl, <laughs> I think men can have babies. Like who just got somebody pregnant at like 97 years old? You know, the guys will keep impregnant. Alec Baldwin still pushing them out. I mean, well, not true. pushing them out. Having Hilaria push them out or whatever. But yeah. Oh, you know, they have a show coming out, right? I think it's on TLC, yeah, TLC. or something. Terrifying. Ooh. I know. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm having a Either lot way, of trouble concentrating. I know, me too. Either way, I'm convinced that this family uh, does not like Caroline. I'm convinced that they want to stall out Sergio until Caroline is no longer viable to have a baby. And I'm convinced uh, that they just are hoping that the longer that Sergio stalls out, the more time it will, like, the the greater the chances that he'll wake up one day and realize that maybe there's a better uh, person in his life for him. I think they know that he's never going to realize that, but they're just waiting for Caroline to tire of him and get rid of him. Because she really yes. does act like someone sitting with a meal that she didn't order. Like, well, mm. And he, I'm sorry, and he, this is not. This has bacon on top of this. You're gonna take this back, and they're like, "No, keep that. We'll make you another one." And she's just looking at it like, "Well, it's still something I didn't order." While she's waiting for the real meal to come, she. Um, well, also Sergio keeps saying things like, "I just, you know, I want to have a descendants. I, I need to have my descendants." It's like, do we need to have Sergio's descendants? Is that DNA that needs to be propagated? I'm not fully sure. I think like we can keep it on his sister's side. It's like Valpax. Did this really need to be printed? <laughs> I feel like that was stupid. How many car washes can Who we go to? <laughs> we literally don't need I already have a dry many... cleaner. I don't need all these coupons. <laughs> we don't need copies of this crap. We didn't no. need the first one. We don't need multiple copies just littered all over the world. Okay, keep that shit to yourself, bro. Sergio's DNA is like a Val pack. Just put that one up in our. But you know what? Why can't I just don't understand? Because Sergio's whole thing, like. She's like, I would have 10 by now if he just put it in someone else, you know? She's like, take the frozen embryo, put it in an oven in Arizona, grow it and ship it back to me when it's ready, you know? We'll get it to Nanny, and by the time it's old enough to yell back at me like, Yasmin, I'll be dead, probably, you know? Um, but he doesn't want to because he's, like, obsessed with having pictures of her pregnant or something. Like, he, <laughs> like, it's called he needs his cake pictures. It's just so weird. Just Photoshop, just Photoshop. It. it is actually hilarious that like she has given him an avenue to her having a baby and he won't do it because he does want to have those photos. And that's just, I, he's just an idiot. He's just one of the biggest idiots on Bravo, uh, you know? Yeah. God, he's so cute. 
And you know the way she complains about him. Who doesn't want someone adorable who only thinks about them and just stares at them all day and, you know, is like, whatever you want, whatever you need. I love you so much. I mean, I don't personally, but I can see the appeal. Mm, yeah. So uh, now we go uh, over to uh, Ion's house and she is FaceTiming her sister, Ifra. And uh, her sister's her big sister and talking about how close they are. And like Ion Beauty, like there's going to be a launch coming soon. So the sister's going to come visit. And uh, Ion says like everything's going really well. And her brother is going to come from London and all this stuff. And she's, they're basically just like chatting. They're having a very like happy chat. Chanel talks about how um, her FGM really bonded her sister because her sister was there for her, etc. So they're bonded through this trauma. And then they like wind up joking because the sister is like, I'm excited to come and I can cook for your son uh, because basically um, Taj is a Taj or is a tall. He basically gets no good cooking all year long. Yeah. See, that shows a clip of her being like, oh, we're going to order some snacks. And he's like. You don't order snacks. And she's like, yes, I am. I'm ordering oranges and lemons. He's like, that is disgusting. <laughs> That's not a snack. But the sister's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to bring some maize power. But, you know, uh, powder, maize power, <laughs> maize power, <laughs> uh, which is what you get after eating a corn tortilla. We all know it. <laughs> yep. But she's going to bring some maize powder. And um, she's like, but it's white powder coming through the um, coming through the airport. So I might get stopped. And I totally know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> do you <laughs> yes i'm being terrified you're gonna get full i mean it was for like actual coke oh. but still. <laughs> i was like i felt like Jax taylor knows this specifically Commercials. here comes one right now so so uh. then we go over to the glass house and caroline brooks is there with her mom and her son and she's like, um, she's like, well, my mom comes every year. And this year she chose to come to hang out for Adam's birthday. And right now I really need her because my mom keeps me calm and she does understand how to get a toilet out of the floor. So maybe she can help out a little bit. <laughs> um, so they have a menu. I, I got the menu. It's like a tea menu and a coffee menu. Oh, I thought it was going to be funny because they showed the menu, so I took a screenshot. But it's like Moroccan mint tea, chamomile tea. So they can order anything because it's very fancy at the glass house. And so the son orders tea, and Brooks is like, Ooh, Earl Grey tea. Why would you be ordering Earl Grey tea? What, what the hell? Now you're ordering tea, idiot. Oh yes. Yeah. She is so obnoxious about it because he's like he doesn't know how to do. He's never had, he never ordered tea before, and so he doesn't know how to do the tea bag. And she goes, "Well, why did you order it if you don't know how to make the tea?" I'm like, <laughs> "You should be so happy that your son has decided to have tea." And then mocks him when he gets the tea. She's like, "Oh, really? Let's see if you know how to brew that, stupid!" I'm like, wow, you're, you're great. <laughs> You're doing and then, great at this. She's and simultaneously asking him, like, why is it that you open up to your dad about things but not to me? And then meanwhile, she's mocking him for the way he puts it. You're tea literally into a tea. tea shaming the child. I mean, my God, he's gonna go home and put on that fucking meta thing, and it's, it's gonna be like, oh, you're having Earl Grey, you lovely child. Why don't you try that with a little honey? Here's how you do it. <laughs> So, yeah, so she's basically an asshole <laughs> to her son. She that's really the, is an the asshole. The long and the short of it, yeah. Yeah, and that's that. So then, uh, but she's going to throw him a big party uh, to show everybody what good mother she is because she spends a ton of money. And, of course, she's paying for it all, and Zoltan's not paying for a thing. No, nothing. So now we go to Sara's home. And uh, her new home, which is, like, a big modern thing. It's It's big, you know super expensive, super luxe building. And she says, today it's very sad. Akin is leaving. He's going back to Germany. Maktoum is heartbroken. He's not going to have his boy's time anymore. Stop twerking, Maktoum. Maktoum, <laughs> stop it. Maktoum is like up on the door and be like... Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> and then we see all this like time that Akin is spending with Maktoum and uh Maktoum and it's just so sweet um I saw this tweet the other day that was really funny that said something like uh I think it was on Bravo Bravo and Botox who hi love you uh who compiles all the funny tweets from the week and stuff and <laughs> one of them was like Sarah talking about how all she cares about is finding the perfect father for Maktoum when she's dating an Instagram thought basically exactly <laughs> who lives out of who lives out of the country right uh <laughs> 
<laughs> so uh, she sits Akeen down, and um, she's like, so, Akeen, you know, uh, listen, this is crazy. By the way, did you notice that Sarah gets absolutely crazy eyes when she starts talking to the guy? Did you notice that that happens? I've never noticed her with crazy eyes before. But when she starts talking to the guy, her eyes get really wide. And she's like, ah, I kind of told my mom about you. And she said number three, a.k.a. meaning her third husband. But, you know, she also shares that once she, inter- you know, uh, also I'm saying that well, like once I introduce a guy to my family, you know, they kind of stay with me. So everyone's worried. What do you think of that? I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> she literally gets crazy around the guys. She is. Or she's just stigmatized. It could be all of the above, to be honest, because she is definitely like, I feel like she's saying way too much. She's like, yeah, tell my mom she loves you. Uh, we're going to get married and we already have a venue. I mean, just kidding. We don't have a venue. Like, we don't, we definitely don't have a venue. But anyway, like, have you thought about a venue? Do, have you thought about a look? Do you want to do a talk? Do you want to do a theme? Should we do a Star Wars wedding? What do you think? <laughs> he's like, Whoa. How do you feel about this? Do you see a future? Do I see a future? Do you see a future? And he's like, uh, I see a future as well. She goes, oh, really? What kind of future? <laughs> what kind of future? Well, <laughs> what kind? Do I have long hair, short hair? Am I wearing creams? Am I in Are there spaceships? Oh. Do, we have, do we have flying cars? I really want to know about, like, specifically everything about the future. <laughs> is there more public transportation in the future? Because that's disgusting. I don't want that kind. What kind of future is it? Tell me. <laughs> Has Mike Toom won a twerking championship? He wants to know. That's a question from him. <laughs> and uh, he's like, uh, well, it's a future between you and me. She's like, well, I like to be direct. He's like, okay, well, then I mean, um, you know, a future, a relationship, marrying someday, deadlifting my own body weight, you know, <laughs> getting, getting kids. kids. <laughs> From the kids' door. What are you, Caroline Stanbury? <laughs> the only other cast member I could imagine being like, oh, just go get some kids already. <laughs> so everything's Bothering going- me with this. Just go get some. So he's like being pretty chill about this so far. Like everything's like, you know, like I feel like a lot of times the story is with someone who's like clearly like a fuck boy. Like the moment you start talking about commitment, they start getting squirrely or whatever. So I'm like, oh, wow, he's doing well. And then she goes, and how do you see the man in the marriage? Because I see them as the protector, the provider. And the and the sole provider. And he's like, sole provider? You know, he was like looking around at this enormous house. This personal trainer in Germany, he's looking at this enormous house. He's like, wait, I'm, I'm, you're supposed to pay for me. <laughs> he's I'm, like, I'm not even I'm, buying I'm, you things I'm, for I'm your soul. Here. <laughs> like, you're not even getting shoes out of me. You're dating a thought from, from fucking Instagram who personal trains for a living. How are you expecting him to pay for this lifestyle, ma'am? And he's because he was there, he was looking for the free meals. He's like, I want to be the next Sergio. He's like, I literally, like, I went on to be Sergio.com and was like, I signed up and I got paired with you. How did this happen? Yeah. I'm not the sole, sole provider. Yeah, uh, I think you're barking up the wrong tree here. You know, you can't just like pick the hottest one and be like, and now you can also support me. That's just not how it works. You know, they're different. You need to find a go find a Zoltan. Like, let's be, let's just be real. Okay. You can't just have your cake and eat it too. Talk about wanting your cake and eating it too. You just can't do that. So Akeen goes, okay, well, when the man pays for everything, who has the most say in the relationship? And <laughs> not okay, you. So, not okay. you. Okay. This is, okay. This is not a uh, stockholders meeting where whoever has the most <laughs> shares gets to, you know, pass the laws for the company. Okay. This is a relationship. And by the way, Sarah, um, you know that discussion you were saying how you you know you've had a bad history of picking men you found men who've been narcissistic and who have treated you very poorly um this would be the sign on the highway that says um last exit before the toll okay <laughs> like you're you've been warned get off get off the highway yeah, but it's also like saying, I want a highway that's private that only people with money can be on. God, I hate toll highways. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> complaining about paying the toll. Because she's literally like, and you know what I want? I want a man who pro- is the protector, provider, the sole provider. The man is the man and the, t- the woman is taken care of. Like she's going for such old, like, I mean, for the us, tradi- you know, well, for she's our going culture, for super like, traditional. she's going this like ultra traditional way, which, you know, is like 
we've kind of been fighting for the right to not <laughs> have that well, look. Uh, as our only option. I guess exactly. that is still an option. I'm not saying it's not, but I'm just saying like she wants she wants her cake and eat it too. She wants to be like, oh, this is what I want. I want a traditional marriage. But he's like, oh, you know, you mean the kind of marriage where the man is the leader of the house? And she's like, no, no, I'm still the leader of the house. <laughs> Like, <laughs> well, the, the problem is that, like, um, I don't. It's not. It's not crazy to say, look, I want. I want you to provide for the family. I want to like raise the kid. I'm going to do my thing or whatever, and you provide. But where it's a partnership, but like that's your end of the partnership. That's fine. But sh- the thing is that she often expresses things like. I want this to be super traditional. This is the way we traditionally do it, that you're the provider. But like, it's tricky because it also makes it sound like she wants really traditional gender roles too. And I think she just needs to have a conversation with um, Lindsay Hubbard. <laughs> and I think that like, she could be like, how do you say it? To, how do you explain it? <laughs> you know, because I think Lindsay's actually kind of was saying the same thing to Carl and Summer House, but Lindsay frames it not like, oh, let's, I want this relationship steeped in tradition. She's more like, you provide for us. I'm going to take care of the kid. And that's how it's going to be. And I'm still going to call the shots. Well, if any man ever said to me, I get to call the shots because I make more money, right? No. Yeah. I would be like, you're fucking out of here. Out. So fuck this guy, first uh, of all. Yes, that's the most important takeaway. Thank you for right. reminding. So fuck that guy. I just think that going into it and being like, I want a traditional marriage where the woman is taken care of and provided for. That's also pretty gross to me i don't i don't love that either i don't like either one of those things right um so either way i think it's a recipe for disaster right here Lindsay, i think was different because Lindsay was saying i want you to be when we when we have a baby i want to be able to stay at home for a few years with that baby and i need to make sure that the baby is provided for because right now i'm making more money and if i'm going to trust you to be the one who's going to exactly. provide this money you know whatever right. but i don't know if they're even talking about children or whatever but just a flat out like well, I want the man to do this. You know, I don't. I just don't like it. It just yeah, no, it, it was too many, too many things in modern culture that I'm fighting against. It felt regressive, but yeah. Um, Thank but, you. Yeah, no problem. Such an easy, such an easy way to put it. But I need to spend 20 minutes stumbling Look, over my tongue. And obviously, so the two of us like fully support. If that's like, if that's what, something that you want in your relationship, then that's that's fine. Like more power to you but it just feels it, it, the way she phrases it it feels re- regressive and then she's like surprised when there's like a regressive response to it too so um but doesn't excuse the regressive but response also we're also way. kind of falling all over ourselves about having an opinion about not wanting women to be treated like they were in the dark ages <laughs> We're acting like that's the worst thing to say. And uh, that's how I feel. I'm not apologizing. So um, Sarah then tells us about her dad provided everything, you know, with yada, yada, yada. And uh, you can see that Akeen is just like, fuck, I'm not paying. I'm not paying for this house. <laughs> he's just looking right. He's not even listening anymore. He's like, how do I back out slowly from here? Like, I'll pay for everything if we can live a Wendy's kind of a lifestyle. But... <laughs> I not can... this. <laughs> like, if you want a baked potato every night for dinner, I will provide that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I'll get us some, like, protein powder, but I think I'm a personal trainer. So. Yeah. so now they talk about, but what about Akeen? Uh, what about Akeen leaving? And are you going to be exclusive? And she's like, you know, in Arab culture, if you're dating somebody, that means you're prepping for marriage. Um, but he's not a boyfriend until he meets my family. But he's basically saying... If we're together and I'm dating other people, if we're together, then we have to be exclusive. I'm not going to be okay with you dating other people. Right. So then we go over to Caroline and Yasmin at uh, at a restaurant, and Caroline uh, Caroline 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 says uh, that she uh, she wasn't able to go on the college tour because of the house house delays, etc. Which yes, is- I know it was important to Yasmin, but guess what? My bonsai tree needed to be watered and given vitamins. <laughs> and that's it. Sorry. <laughs> Unfortunately, I saw Sergio walking around our toaster with a fork too many times to be feel really confident leaving him home alone. So I just had to stay home and keep a watchful eye on him. <laughs> I tried going with Yasmin, but Sergio lied down in front of the airplane wheels and started crying and screaming, My baby, my baby, I'm the man of the house. Please respect me. Honestly, that's probably what it was because, like, if Sergio were like had any sort of 
you know, capability of doing anything on his own, he probably would have said, I'll take care of the stuff at the house. You go on this college tour because like, that's important, a college tour. Uh, but she can't, she can't leave Sergio alone because he's like, otherwise the house will just crumble into dust. Well, also he was sobbing about it because he's like, well, you're going on the honeymoon with your, with your husband. How, how do you think that's going to make me feel, baby? How, how am I going to feel, baby? Prioritize me, baby. Be quiet, Sergio. Go back into the into the luggage bin I pulled you out of. I don't even know what that means, but it felt nice to say. So, uh, so then the kid is like, like, well, you know, uh, yeah, I'm into UCLA, or but I like Miami a lot. Blah blah blah. blah. It's, and so they're talking about the relationship, and Caroline's like, "Do you feel like I prioritize you, whatever your name is?" She goes, "No, mother, I don't feel like you prioritize any of us." She goes, "Us? When you say us." Who else do you mean? Me and the other two children. There are two others of you. God, I nearly forgot about that. Shocking. <laughs> and then Caroline talks about how, you know, it was very difficult because uh, my ex and I were distant. Then I meet Sergio. Then COVID hits. The husband leaves and Sergio moves right in. I mean, what was I supposed to do? You know, I mean, in COVID, you can only get close to your lover. I mean, was I supposed to spend more time with my children? They might have had germs. <laughs> I mean, what was I supposed to do? Just leave Sergio on the street, let him rot and die out there in a COVID infested landscape? Actually, though, now that I say it, it is, does sound quite hilarious. <laughs> Um, so Caroline's like, well, I don't want you to think that I take Sergio's side. She goes, but you do take Sergio's side. That's what really upsets me, you know? Well, let me explain something to you, darling. Sergio is the child that I wanted. Does that make you feel better? <laughs> you just came at a time and a place from a person. She just didn't want you. Does that make you feel better? You know, by the way. This is not the salad I ordered. It's exactly what I said when you came out. Does that make you feel any better, darling? You're not a person. You're like a salad. All right? Salads don't cry. Do you understand? You know, here's a, here's a way to look at it, Yasmin. In real estate, when you're buying a house like we just did, you can either get a fresh new house or you can get a fixer-upper. And all children are inherently fixer-uppers, aren't they? It's like an 18-year fixer-upper. And I thought, you know what? I want new construction. So I just went and got Sergio. I think now it makes sense, right? I mean, look at the new mansion, darling. All right, there was a big plot of dirt. Just raw dirt. Disgusting. You get water, you get mud all over your feet. That was you. And then I said, you know what would look better there? A bonsai tree. So I had a bonsai tree craned over the house and into the dirt. The bonsai tree's name is Sergio. Does this make more sense now? Do you feel better? And I mean, we can all agree when that tree was finally installed, everyone was so happy. Even those two adorable street urchins on the banister. Those are your children. <laughs> I just keep forgetting there's more than just you. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> um, so Caroline just hands her a napkin like, here, stop blubbering. She's like, I have my own napkin. She's like, then use it, please. God, it's disgusting. <laughs> It's embarrassing. So then um, they, she's like, darling, I promise you, I'm going to shift priorities more. I'm not going to only ignore you. I'm also going to ignore Sergio more. So we just even <laughs> it out. Do you feel better now? You've made me realize that I do need to change my priorities. I need to hang out with Michael more and be away from all you whiny brats. Thank you. Thank you for shining that light on me. Now we go to Talene's house. And um, her sister, Lo, Lo, is there. And also her mom and Rafi. Rafi, did Rafi get Chucky hair or has he always had Chucky hair? Because he's got Chucky, Chucky hair. Chucky, like the doll? The doll, the doll hair. Yeah, he's got I never, like, I did not notice that. Plugged I, in there. Like the big red crazy hair? No, it's not the color. It's that it's doll hair because it's like plugs. Oh. <laughs> 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 um, I, I do per, perhaps I, I'm gonna have to study I'll, I'll go back to the tape and study and come back with an answer that guy's got more plugs than a lamp store and I was like <laughs> they look pretty good I mean it, look it took me how many six episodes to even notice them so I think they're pretty wow. good I'm gonna get them could you even imagine me with hair I can't wait I'm gonna get the Rachel I think I would <laughs> I would love for you to have the Rachel actually I'm gonna do it so um, it's a sad day because their dog Coco died and so they're all sad 
and they're talking, they're reflecting. She's on like, Coco. "Oh my god, guys, we lost cokes." And I was like, "Oh my god, I've been there too. Why? Why am I like with so many people today?" You know, airplane, air- airports. You know, you gotta <laughs> dump things before you get to TSA. <laughs> So uh, Talene is like, Coco has been with us longer than my husband. We took her everywhere. She has traveled more than Lady Gaga on a world tour. <laughs> and uh, Talene is, so she's like talking, she's telling the table. She's like, you know what, everyone, I want to say in memory of Coco, the one thing Coco loved more than anything else was a grudge. So here, this one's going to be for you, Coco. I wrote about Coco dying in a group chat. And the only ones who reached out were Ion, Lisa, and Stanberry. Brooks didn't. Do you know how hurtful that is? A dog just died. How could you not reach out to someone? <laughs> a dog just died. And Rafi is like, you guys, you always have your drama. And then it gets back to normal the next day. So whatever. Women. And... <laughs> Huh? Women. Women. Am I right? <laughs> so Talene's like, well, we haven't spoken in a week. And then, you know, and then Brooks uh, was trying to make it seem like these girls are terrible. And, you know, I call her out on it. And then Brooks, you know, she starts acting out. And I said, you know what? Isn't this like stirring the pot a little? I mean, hello. Do you think it's like stirring the pot a little? Ma. I mean, what, is the pot stirred? Is it stirred a lot or a little, ma? It's stirred a little, right? It's stirred. It's stirred. I love how Lo and the mom, they all have the same voice. It's very stirred, Talene. It's Everything is stirred. The whole thing is stirred. It's so funny. It's like Marge Simpson sisters, yeah. which we also say about the girls from uh, Jersey, the sisters on yeah. Melissa Gorga's sisters on New Jersey. Like, hey, Melissa. Hey, honey. How's it going? Good. Talene's like, I'm seeing a side of Brooks that maybe she wasn't the friend that I thought she was. And it's just like really, really hard to digest. Sort of like the cookies I made last week. So we go to Adam's 11th birthday party. And um, it's this big fancy party, and Zoran comes. And, uh, Z- you know, Brooks I keep is calling X him or Zoltan. His name is Zoran. I keep calling him Zoltan. <laughs> I know. Is, is Zoltan the guy from Big in the. Um, I think so. He's the future telling machine, right? <laughs> I <think> Zoltan. So. <laughs> this Actually, is Zoran. I have a Zoltan. I went to a game place and I I did the Zoltan thing. God, I've got to open this car door. I'm dying in here. It's the oh valley God. in the summer and I'm recording in my car I'm like a fucking crazy person. <laughs> <sighs> this is how I'm going to die. But anyway, I went to one of those game places and I got a Zoltan reading. I should bring it on and read it. But I don't want to get up. I'll do it later. So it's this whole beach set up, kids party and everything. Uh, Z- Zoran comes in and Brooks goes, my relationship with Zoran is like the toilet in the glass house, up and down. And never know, you never know what you're going to get. Also like the toilet. It's like a roll of the dice, like the toilet. <laughs> Basically what I'm trying to say is so much of my life is wrapped up in that toilet. <laughs> and the producer's like, is he footing the bill? And she's like, footing the bill. Zoran's footing the bill for his vodka tonics. That's my son's birthday. That's on me. That is all on me. Um, so then Sarah and Lisa come and they talk about how, oh, we spent so much money on birthdays in Dubai. And Lisa's like, yeah, I'm already planning Max's birthday at the world seven star Burj Al Arab. What is it called? Burj Al Arab? Burj Al Arab. It's the teardrop. The teardrop Sorry, thing. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm, I'm, ig- I'm ignorant on that one. So Sarah's like, once I went to a two year old's birthday and they gifted a Rolls Royce. I mean, what the hell is a two-year-old going to do with a Rolls Royce? Well, then I asked that two-year-old if he wanted to marry me (laughs) and support my family. I was going to say, oh, I'm just remembering that was actually the party that I threw for Mac to him. (laughs) I asked that that kid to pay for the Rolls Royce. That two-year-old climbed on top of the Rolls Royce, and it worked. (laughs) So uh, they're all chatting and everything. And the big thing here is that Talene has not shown up uh, or she, she never she never RSVP'd or whatever. So they're in like a big petty fight. So Brooks didn't didn't reach out about the dog. So Talene's not going to the kid's birthday. Uh, yeah, it's pretty shitty. Although at the same time, uh, she probably is thinking I'm probably going to fight with Caroline if I go this birthday. And I don't want to do that. Adam's at Adam's party, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, they are, they're all hanging out. They're joking about like how, you know, Stamber is like, well, I'm never going to drink again. After the night I had with you, roll that footage, roll that beautiful bean footage as I've learned from Ronnie. And, uh, and we see on Instagram, Caroline being drunk and falling into a bush, sort of Candice Luan style. And she's like having so much fun with Talene. 
Yes. And then um, the who is it? The husband who compares Stanbury to Margot Robbie? I uh, know. I think it's the maybe it is. I don't remember. Someone did. Maybe it's yeah. I think it was the husband. Yeah, because uh, there was also footage of Stanbury like late at night going into Rafi's room and like crawling onto onto him, and he's like, "Oh my god, I get woken up by Margot Robbie." And then Talene's mom is like, "Who's that? <laughs> is he a porn star?" <laughs> so then uh back to the kids party um brooks and sarah are talking and sarah's like um so did you see stanbury's story what is talene doing in those stories and brooks is like yeah lisa said it to me stanbury and talene hanging out on instagram deep diving into the pits of hell that is very <laughs> very fitting gutter meets gutter wow like, geez geez that's like your best friend that you're you may be in a fight but that's like your best friend that you're talking about and she's yeah. like, Stan Barry, you were complaining about Talina. How the bush is open at Beyonce, and now you're letting her jump right into your bush. And I, you also just made a joke about Bush's beans and the footage. A lot of bush talking. Can we get a? Can we get a fourth bush? No. Comedies and threes and fives. I, I'm done. No yeah, more but bush at the same time, you were over there standing up for her and her showing her bush to everybody, and now you're calling her uh, gutter trash. So whatever. Exactly. So Brooks is like, it's like a child. When you tell him, hey, baby, the fire's hot. Don't touch him. You're going to get burned. Uh, you know what I do? I pour the hot Earl Grey all over her head, and I say, burn, you Earl Grey ordering little fuck. Burn. <laughs> her son so, just passes with like a Band-Aid on his head. He's like, hi, Mom. Thanks for the party. <laughs> So then we go to um, back to Talene's and Talene and Stanbury are talking and Talene's like, well, I'm not chasing. I'm not going to Adam's birthday. And Stanbury's like, I mean, I probably gave Talene more of a chance because Brooks made such an effort to keep us apart. The more I've gotten to know Talene, she's her own person. She's just very, very funny. She's like the anti-Sergio. <laughs> Enjoyable, like, pleasant, smart. Than you. Say it again, I'm sorry. <laughs> Enjoyable, pleasant, smart. Really all the good things you look for in someone you socialize with. <laughs> And the producer's like, is she funnier than you? And she's like, no one's funnier than me. <laughs> laugh. Oh, oh, Valentina, please come in here. Valentina. Okay. Laugh. And uh, uh, someone, I think Talene's like, so do you think, why, why do you think she's so mad? Do you think she was drunk? And uh, Stanbury goes, oh God, Brooks is always drunk. And that's how it ends. And no it was like, ha, 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 ha. And we come to the end of Real House Vibes of Dubai. And then we get a mid-season trailer. Uh, was great. Which, which was good. And it also makes me feel like this will be a nice, like, a nice tight season. I'm going to say 12, uh, 12 episodes, maybe 10 episodes. With My two, favorite uh, kind of season. Reunion. You know I love a 12-er. I feel like, you know what? Like on a show like this, a tight season works really well. So thank you, Bravo, for being on top of that. And thank you, everyone, for being here. We sure do love you all. Remember to go check out um, our Love Island footage. Um, not footage. <laughs> we just are taking footage. Well, this footage as well. Yeah, our Love Island content that we're doing on Patreon. We'll have um, wrap ups that we'll compile it together at the end of the week. So there's that too. And also check out our website. If you're looking to get into some back catalogs on some of our shows, we have some playlists up to make navigation easier for you guys. Watch Thanks for being here and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Watch what crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Alison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Erin McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no last namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurtz. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. We want to hang with Liz Lang. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. We got our wish. It's Jen Plish. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo. 
Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Chadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. Ring that bell for Rachel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kutar. We love you guys.